Hellos, welcomes back everyone. And fourth year with even more Star Wars The Old Republic playing as Fallon, my Imperial Agent. And it's been a couple of days since we got to the end of the second story arc as part of the main storyline here. You may notice I've uh, changed up my armor slightly. We may wear this for a short period of time for anyone who may be interested. This is the Intelligence Agent's armor set. It even comes with its own headpiece here. I'm not a fan of headpieces. Not, not, um, okay, I'm a fan of a few of them. Uh, for example, somewhere I may have the... Ooh, I don't know where it is. Ooh, I put it somewhere. <laughs> ah, like the, the scout head gear. I like the... Uh, like the earpiece and microphone setting. That tends to go quite well with a lot of Imperial Agent armor sets. But, uh, yes. I lost track of, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Obviously, we have still yet to confront Imperial Intelligence about the Castellian restraints and how the Republic Strategic Information Service managed to uh, control us uh, the place blocks on us to protect their members, to protect the squad through their operation. Otherwise, we could have maybe even retrieved a shadow arsenal for the Empire. But, no. <sighs> the Sith got a bit worried that a non-Force sensitive could actually somehow, even temporarily, match a member of the Dark Council and so um, they had to make sure that we would remain loyal so we have um, again had a vacation while the war is uh, heating up <clears throat> the Treaty of Curson hasn't been broken yet but it is only a matter of time something is going to spark the situation and the war is going to come back fully fledged. But before we actually head back to Drom and Cass, yeah, we am, um, obviously we've had a new week, a new refresh on the Conquest mission. I do have this 50,000 Conquest points. Should I use it here? I mean, there's no reason not to. Apart from I can save it for another class in the future. But if I'm leveling up another character, as long as I focus each week and do missions, use a taxi service, put in a utility point, I'll, I'm bound to get the 50,000 conquest. So, yeah, we may as well use it. Da -da. So we might as well complete this week's uh, event. Because even if I held on to it for when we're level 75, it's not going to matter too much. Now or later. So we'll take these goodies. This is uh, just going to be an interlude video where we're just going to we're going to take it easy. Um really worry about that anymore. Some companion gifts. Some eternal contenders gear. Right, what does this look like? That's a mastery relic, which is kind of a shame. I want a power relic. See what the rest of that armor would look like, but hmm. so be it. Right, we'll go store this stuff away. Um, we do have a bit of mail in regards to the end of chapter two. Oh shit! I'm selling companion gifts.
Not, uh, not that I'm really using them for anything else, let's be fair. But, uh, right. So we have extra renown. Reputation, which we don't need just yet. Defeated enemies count twice for achievements. Extra power. Extra presence. Either way, let's get ourselves over to Viaken Space Dock, the Imperial Fleet. I say, we're going to take it easy. We have plenty of new companions. We have probably plenty of uh, conversations to have with our crew here. Which is why we're just going to take it easy. spoken to Vector since we recruited him on Alderaan. We have Dr. Eckerd Loken, if that's even his true name. We have now Rainier Temple, a member from the Chess Defense Force, who is Force Sensitive, speaking of. Leaving, sir. looking to do the flashpoint known as the Red Reaper. Let's see what it's all about, shall we? This is Viking Space Doctor Darth Malgus. Your strike team has arrived. Then let us begin. Perhaps you have heard of Darth Ikaral, a great man of pure Sith blood, decorated by the Emperor and honored for his might. Ikaral lived like royalty a century ago, in a time when pure bloods carried unparalleled prestige and the Empire remained hidden. I know about the Red Skin, but the history eludes me. The Sith species interbred with fallen Jedi long ago. That ancestry marks a pure blood. They say the pure-blooded Sith left behind were wiped out when we left the Droman Kars and rebuilt our Empire a millennium past. But Ikaral believed pure blood survived outside the Empire, reduced to barbarism on forgotten worlds. Seventy years ago, Ikaral left in search of these lost Sith, and never returned. Now Ikaral is back from his seventy-year journey. Why isn't that good news? Three days ago, we received this message from Lord Senu at his fortress on the edge of known space. It was an Imperial ship of uh, outdated design. It jumped in system and began firing. Then the landing parties came. Pure bloods dressed like savages, butchering my men. They're coming for me now. That creature was not Sith. And an empire that calls such creatures Lord is not a Sith empire. For decades, men spoke of Darth Ikaral as a martyr. Now he has returned with a pure blood army, determined to murder the aliens now polluting the empire. So he must be executed before he strikes again, or wins followers. Yes. Darth Ikaral strikes at both Republic and Imperial targets. We have a location on his dreadnought, but it will not last. He must be destroyed before this vendetta causes irreparable damage. Only you are capable. 
It rules a hundred-year-old Sith Lord with an army of followers. I'd appreciate any tactical advice you can offer. I know little about his followers, but Ikarol would not expect an intelligence officer to pose a threat. That is your advantage. You have the coordinates of Ikarol's ship, the Red Reaper. Do this for the Empire. <laughs> Okay. Leaving, sir. So, yes. Where the Empire is very anti alien, Darth Ikarol is even more so. So much so that even Darth Malakus is like, right. This guy, if he gets up on a stadium and gives too many speeches, might just throw the Empire into a civil war. Right, right on the threshold of a new war with the Republic. Let's, um, deal with that, shall we? So, the Red Reaper. Let's wait for the group finder to match us with some fellow party members. Um, next level, which we're very close to, will get us a new utility point. And level 68 will get us our final passive buff as part of the virulence tree. There may be a new ability that we can unlock. I don't think so, but you never know. We'll keep an eye on it each time we level up. There may be a new skill. Otherwise, we can get rid of our Hood Hollow statue from our quick bar. So, I'm trying to think, what do we want next? Siege Bunker is good for area of effect damage. But we need to remember to activate Entrench to get that bonus. We have a 5 second evasion and our roll heals us for 10% of our maximum health. Reasonable. Or just reduce all damage taken while in cover by 5%, which is pretty decent as well. Deployed shields might be worth grabbing just for that 5% reduction. Hmm. When the dark side grows weaker. In this situation, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It may even be a good thing. Considering, considering uh, we're going to be going against Sif in this flashpoint. But yes, um... How does Fallon feel right now about the Republic and the Empire? Things were much simpler when we were pure of conscience, loyal to the Empire and its ideals. The fact that the Empire could do such a thing to someone who was utterly devoted who believed in the Empire, despite being a non-force sensitive. Hmm. Fallon is not so happy with the situation. Understandably so, I think any sound individual would be feeling a bit betrayed. It's the level of betrayal. How far do you go now? How far will Fallon go now to where... Uh, try and justify the situation. After all, the Republic SIS were also at fault. They could have easily brought Fallon in, trusted him as well to be a defector. It would have been their folly. After all, we had a mission. But if they had maybe shown yeah, their generosity would have been their weakness in that situation. But in a true defector, if there was true, if Fallon was truly a defector in that situation, using the Castilian restraints that they learned about, that then a defector would have really been turned off by the situation. It might have went back to the Empire. It's a very nebulous grey area that we find ourselves in right now and I'm still contemplating how Fallon feels 
which way he may go. But there are still events in motion, which we're going to have to uh, enjoy discovering together as we go into the third chapter arc next time. But as I say, we'll spend some time clearing out the Red Reaper, confronting Darth Icarol, and then having a word with our companions, getting to know them a bit more. Maybe seeing how they feel about the Empire might put our own thoughts in perspective. After all, they am. Um, Rainier Temple's been away from the Empire for a while, but seemingly she is loyal. But she's been part of the Chiss Defense Force. Eckerd Loken apparently has been part of intelligence for many, many years. So much so that people believe he's actually retired. Obviously, Kaleo doesn't care. In Vector! Well, Vector is. Vector, isn't he? <laughs> ah, just waiting for the group finder to pop. Hopefully it won't take us too long. It's fairly early in the morning. Is there many instances here? There are a couple. I was thinking about what the air... Uh... What the next few worlds have in store. It'd be interesting to see what the next planet has in the store for us because it used to always cause me a bit of a uh, bit of trouble. But we'll talk more about that probably uh, next time or when we arrive on that world. Bloody hell, three snipers and a juggernaut. <laughs> We have a Sith warrior and three Imperial agents. Okay, so we docked at an orbital station, and we're trying to find the docking bay to the Red Reaper itself. tension on me there, my AoE abilities, but that's fine. Now let's heal up. So up to the first boss. Oh, well, they bloody hell engaged him already. Jesus. Seems like it's going to be one of those ones. We're rushing through. So we hear the cargo deck.
67. Happy days. Yippee, so I'll take that. Thank you. Of not having a healer. Also, Tarek is playing on a, the one of the DPS trees. I don't know if this is actually the shortcut, or if you, the shortcut's cutting through here. Either way, not the end of the world. It's been a while since I've actually done the shortcuts on uh, the Red Reaper. Trust that everyone else knows where they're going. Oh, we have another boss. Oh, yes. Hello, virulent sniper with us. Disconnected. Okay. We try to take control of the grid. Speak only once. You are bold to venture aboard this ship, and you are a fool to seek confrontation. The Empire must be cleansed. It is the only way to glory. take control of the bridge but Darth Icarol had control elsewhere so now we're gonna go hunt him down
tanks here. Cultor tanks here. What's going on? Cryogenics console. We disable a re shield. We have these cryogenic tanks preserving Sif pure bloods that have been collected over 70 years. Um, I think we'll uh, just terminate life support. Seems like our fellow uh, agent here agreed. They're just as savage as Dorf Icarol. Oh, where are you running? Oh, are you one? Do you want them knocked off the edge? Shit, that won't work. job. Archaeology shortcut here. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to drag him to the edge. Drag him over if you can. <laughs> I remember this place well. Oh, crap. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> gonna happen to someone. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. And now we're in the meditation chamber, the final chamber. And Darth Icarol himself, the pure-blooded heretic. Ah, uh, someone had to go flying. Bloom's um, having trouble again with their net connection, it seems.
Hello! Ooh, nice blade. Fancy. This boss is a pain in the ass. But thankfully I know the mechanic. Oh, I think I remember the mechanic to get this to make uh, to defeat him, so again, um like some of the boss fights he has a he has different stages at like 25, 50, 75 percent health. I think he also has a knockback, so we have to be careful we don't go flying. Go that way, fine. I'll go this way then. I'm gonna four at any time. So, can I not grab another one? I can. Alright. Get ourselves away. Mission complete. Jackie went flying not once but twice. <laughs> oh dear. This is Viking Space Doctor Darth Malgus. Your oh, is the mission complete already? Oh. 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 Interesting. We order completed a quest. Ah, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, do I need to pick up any mods? Um, I probably could pick up some level 65 item modifications, but for the storyline, we don't necessarily need them. Oh, we just got a load of earpieces for our trouble. Oh well, so be it. Uh, what other what currencies do we have? Hmm, okay. Not a problem. Right, so let's have a look at this mail. Because we did a lot of, well, I'll be honest, we did all of Story Arc 2 kind of in one day. Oh, that's where I spent uh, cutting through it anyway. So we have a message in regards to Chance from Sabre. This is Arden Koff sending a message to the rest of the team. 
But now you all know that Chance didn't make it back from Taras. He once told me that he once told me he was terrified of dying. But he said what scared him worse was dying and no one knowing or caring. Dying forgotten like so many in this business do. <laughs> yeah, Chance respected us. He was quite nice. But he, it still allowed him to use the keyword on us. And then we have another message from Arden Koff in regards to Kai Sison's cult. To no one's surprise, killing that crazy Jedi caused its own share of problems. The Nikto who worshipped her blaming the Republic and demanding justice. If we don't produce a scapegoat soon, they'll go on a rampage. Even if we do, the cult's going to live on with only Kai Sison's ramblings to guide them. Right. So we have yet to receive any more mail in regards to our time on Quesh or Hoff, but that may pop up. Either way. Let's uh, have a word with our companion, shall we? Once again, we'll probably speak to them in the order in which we've recruited them. So, Kaleo, it's been a while. She has um, former partners looking for her, which annoys me. <laughs> Because it may impede in our operations if they find out where she is. All right, we've got a problem. I told you about my ex-partners, how they decided to come after me. Well, that's fine. I can deal with that. What's not fine is when random freaking bounty hunters come after me because they smell a trend. Who's coming after you, Kalia? Guys called The Menace. Never worked with him, never dated him, never heard of him. He's tracking me down. Apparently got a rep as a duelist. Probably wants to auction me to anyone with a grudge. You went after Anne Spichel to auction her off? I nabbed her because it was personal. The money was just sense. Look, we need to do something. Get a little aggressive. You in? What exactly are you planning? Don't know yet. Still looking at my options. But we're gonna handle this. Just watch. Great. So some bounty hunters are going, Ooh, is there some money involved in getting Kaleo? There's a lot of people after her. Hmm. Well, we best nab her just in case there is some money. Maybe it doesn't hasn't maybe it hasn't turned up on the bounty broker yet. On like the bounty boards. Great. More trouble. Hey, I know I've been busy, but when are you going to buy me that drink? Something going on? Or are you just feeling friendly? A little of both. I know how you treat girls on missions. You see someone you want, you go after her and make her want you too. It's a fun game for a while, but we both can play better. You agree? You're really not one for subtlety. What's the point? So? Drink? Or no drink. I like you, Kaleo. I'm glad you're on my team. Can that be enough? You're kidding. Huh. Okay, Agent. Next move is yours. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I want to be uh, involved in that little bundle of crazy. Ah, oh dear. So here's the deal. I've been working through the list of guys and gals who might come after me. Ex-partners, hookups, the usual. I'm ready to hit them whenever you are. Last we talked, though, you were pussyfooting around. I haven't committed because you haven't told me what you're doing. I bet. Doesn't matter. You're gonna help me anyway. I went over your head. Talk to the Watchers about placing a few death marks. 
Imperial intelligence is now officially targeting my exes. It's not your place to suggest mission objectives. Then maybe I should just do this without you. I thought you'd want in. There's four targets. Roll my pirate, Yajal the arms dealer, Tatigal the card shark, and that bounty hunter who's following along. I've got locations, so all we need to do is show up and start shooting. Don't you dare ignore me. I will not stand for insubordination from anyone. Great. We'll just wait for my exes to come kill me. You change your mind, you know where to find me. I love working together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's all our conversation. Are we waiting for something? So, oh, so we have a new mission, but it hasn't even... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, it did turn up on my... For some reason, my mission tracker turned off. For some reason... A lot of our quests actually become... They actually level sync to your current level so that you still earn experience relative to the level you're at. But this one is actually greyed out. It's actually... <laughs> it's a level 32 quest. No, I wonder if it's actually been balanced then. Because we'll be level synced down to... 11, I believe, on Hudder. Hmm. Well, she wasn't too impressed that we sound we weren't so enthusiastic about her involving herself in Imperial Intelligence going above our head. I think we'll let her uh, sit it out and wait for a while. So I have a word with Vector, shall we? In get to know him a bit more in his connection. Whether or not he still has a strong connection to his uh, hive. Agent, we're finalizing our exit report for the diplomatic service. 34 pages of seating charts, ambassador profiles, and appendices. We'll transmit it to our superiors, and then we're yours full time. You're going to be an asset to this team, Vector? We certainly hope so. You know, we used to advise first contact missions to new star systems. We met some unusual people, but we haven't had many new experiences since joining the Kilix. Time to broaden our horizons. To see everything fresh, from a Kilik perspective. Something of the sort. Tastes, sounds, smells. They're all a bit different. But we won't bore you. Lead the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just welcomed Vector. Took us long enough. See how he's settling in. What can I do for you, Vector? Agent, excuse us a moment. We hear the song. The nest awakens. Light fills the hive, and we are one. Apologies. It's the hour of revitalization, and... As Dawn Herald, we still participate, in spirit, if not in person. You talk about being Dawn Herald, but I don't know what that is. Traditionally, the Dawn Herald is a warrior and emissary for the Nest, one who confronts the unknown. As Herald, we are more than a typical joiner, and we retain a sense of individuality. It's also why we're useful to you. You aren't entirely part of the hive mind, but you don't want to leave it, do you? The joining changed us, and we are content. In any case, we still honor the Kilix gift, but surely everyone carries over rituals and habits from their lives before intelligence. Having a history makes a person vulnerable. Habits should be forgotten. Connections must be severed. As you say, Agent. We'll keep it in mind. Last night, we ate our first ration bar since leaving the nest. 
We savored the flavor for two hours. We could taste every nutrient, every chemical compound and trace of foil. Do you know what joining the Killix does to a person's senses? Should I be sending you on more nighttime missions? We can't see into every spectrum or smell poison under our nose, but our eyesight has improved. That does bring up something we want to discuss. How do you see our role as operative on your team? I'm not sure what you're getting at. Keeper described us as a covert assault agent. Our role as Dawn Herald gives us that capacity. We just don't know if that's the only reason we're here, or if it should be. If there's information you have or aid you can provide, tell me. I'm still learning your talents. So are we, in a sense. But Agent, our whole life, we've been a diplomat. Whatever else we become, perhaps we shouldn't abandon that so readily. Yeah, unfortunately in our operations, diplomacy is not really high in the list. We tend to get targets and we tend to take those targets out. Uh, discussion, discussion, discussion of why we should take out those targets has already been uh, ratified by Imperial Intelligence. I suppose diplomacy would only be useful in getting more information on how to make it easier to get close to our target. We could make use of that, I suppose. Agent, we hope you don't mind, but we were wondering something. Do you have a family? Siblings, a wife, people to go home to after a mission? Not much room for that in our line of work. We suppose not. We're just trying to understand how you... how anyone in this job keeps a tether to the real world. None of us can exist in isolation forever. Eventually, violence and deceit become second nature. This becomes your real world. Maybe it shouldn't, Agent. And maybe you should find another way before it does. Then again, we're new here. Apologies. <laughs> That's actually quite, um... A, probably correct. We should probably find a hobby to keep ourselves mentally stable. Otherwise, we just become another tool of the Empire. Though, to be fair, that's kind of what we are. You wanted to talk? Yes. The suns are warmer here. Nothing that smells so green when the gamma bursts come. Even the song can rest. We must go. Or as Mingle. Apologies, Agent. Emissaries from our nest. They stowed away aboard the ship and have accompanied us since we left Alderaan. They're becoming quite sociable. There was something you wanted to discuss. The Killix of Alderaan know little of the galaxy, only what they absorb through joiners. Our journey teaches them a great deal, but there is something that intrigues us, intrigues the nest. The fate of our lost kin. What lost kin? Alderaan has only a handful of nests, sleeping beneath the castle lands and awakening every few centuries. The other Killix migrated off-world millennia ago. No one knows what became of them, or whether they survived. But the migration is a primal memory. We miss them. How can you miss long-lost ancestors? The nest never forgets. Memories sink into the unconscious, then resurface ages later. We don't know if it's truly important to find them, but as Dawn Herald, we'll be watching. <laughs> okay. Vector has more to say, but we'll speak to him a bit more later. I'm glad he's settling in. I don't like the idea that there's more Keelix somewhere on board.
so we need to speak to Dr. Logan next. Cypher, I finished unpacking the last of my equipment. Between your ship's onboard systems and my custom apparatus, you'll soon have the finest in-flight laboratory in the sector. You'll make us the envy of the fleet. Then I'll refrain from publicizing it. Officially, of course, I'm in semi-retirement, monitoring background radiation somewhere in the Zetan Wastes. Unofficially, I'm very much looking forward to traveling with you. What exactly is your position in Imperial Intelligence? Let's just say the current administration is happy that I'm off Dromund Kass. But they're willing to turn a blind eye. Should you need anything from me, you only have to ask. Although, if you want my genetic code rewritten, let me know before we leave the ship. I thought you could become a rack ghoul whenever you wanted. It's somewhat more complicated and time-consuming. Well, nothing to be concerned with but rarely an option in the field. Good day. <clears throat> really an option in the field, he says, as he tra transforms back and forth while in air, his tank roll. <laughs> Let's get to know Dr. Logan a bit more. Cypher, join us. Vector and I were just discussing Moff Letshara. We never met her, of course. Quite fortunate, that. But Vector did know her husband, a, a fine Dejaric player, and a scribe of the Ilfmar Gambit. We apparently share the Doctor's taste in theatre. I didn't know you were interested in theatre. Think of it as a, a testing ground for human nature, much like the game of Dejaric. We can finish this later, Doctor. <laughs> Your crew members are delightful people. For instance, did you know Mistress Kaleo is fluent in Kalish profanities? A rare and admirable skill. I wonder how you manage them. Leadership is such a delicate thing. Leadership is making sure people know their place. Spoken like a true Imperial patriot. Still, you should value their camaraderie. A dead or alienated colleague is... A resource lost, and in our business, it's a small step from being disliked to being blacklisted. Alienate enough people that you find yourself running unauthorized missions on a dead planet. Quite. I could tell you stories. But I'm afraid I have to attend to my data analysis program. Another time, Cypher. <laughs> yeah... I get along with the crew, apart from Kaleo. Just because she causes more trouble than she may be worth. She brought that on herself. My good friend, allow an old man some sentiment and join me for a reminiscence. Today is the 13th anniversary of the death of Cypher 12, one of the finest agents I've ever worked with. I've never heard of a Cypher 12. They don't mention our predecessors much. Our history is fleeting, to say the least. Cypher 12 was one of the old guard from before the war. He cultivated allies on the fringes. By the time he received his Mandalorian brands, he'd also become verbally abusive in private, but he never cracked on the job. Always had a smile. Were you partners? I was technical advisor on several of his assignments, and we shared a taste in Miri Allen cuisine. Eventually the odds caught up with him, and a Hapani royal assassin punctured his lungs. Inevitable, really. Are you aware how few ciphers survive past year five? The odds aren't good for any of us. Quite so. I admire the line you walk between obedience and ingenuity. Unfortunately, your methods breed enemies. Be careful not to end up without recourse. <laughs> you chose to join my crew. If you didn't like my methods, you could have found a way out by now. What are you after? I've made it through a very long career by choosing my partners wisely. I've outlasted them all, and I intend to keep doing so. 
Interesting. So I didn't know about the five year potential lifespan of cipher agents. I suppose once you gain a reputation, more and more people will want to cash in on that reputation and take you out. According to the law, though, hmm, I think in terms of the law, the period that the Treaty of Coruscant lasts is ten years. It depends on when we, as an Imperial agent, fall. How long we, how long it took before we joined? As like we got our first mission on Hutter, how far along? How many years have we been a Cypher agent? Maybe only one so far. Obviously we've had time, but time has elapsed during our missions. We've only probably been an agent, officially Cypher agent, for maybe a year or two right now. Of course, in the third story arc, which we're about to be undergoing, <laughs> time is going to uh, accelerate rather quickly. As does the action. But, let's keep getting to know Dr. Logan a bit more. Cypher, I had the most delightful conversation with Master Vector. Did you... I'm getting a feed on my earpiece. One moment. I apologize. That's the third time this week one of my security alarms has gone off. Where did you set up an alarm system? I monitor all my safe houses as a matter of course. I have a few dozen around the galaxy. A, a precaution, really. I haven't needed them in years. Usually when an alarm goes off, it means a child has come exploring, or a rat has slipped through the ventilation shafts. You're not going to double-check? Hardly worth the bother. I really should dismantle the safe houses altogether. But old habits die hard. Besides, I hold out hope that I'll need to go to ground someday in one last exciting adventure. I don't want to be caught unprepared. Keep an eye on those places. I'm your humble servant. I'll let you know what I find. <laughs> I wonder if someone's tracking Dr. Logan trying to find his safe houses. Maybe they found a way, like some pattern to where he's been placing them. Okay. And last but not least, finally we don't need to murder Ensign Temple if uh, we lose eye contact with her. So, let's get to know her a bit more. I rather like your ship. Not exactly military, but it'll be nice not sleeping in a thermosuit. Once we're underway, you'll bring me up to speed on my duties, sir. Show me the tricks of undercover work. You're embarking on a new career. No nostalgia for your old life? None, sir. If I'm here, I intend to commit myself. I probably ought not to bring this up, but there is the matter of my talents. If I'm operating in the Empire, there's the chance the Sith will find out what I can do. They wouldn't be pleased. If your talents become an issue, we'll deal with them. Understood, sir. In the meantime, I intend to make myself irreplaceable. And now we welcome Ensign Temple. Let's get to know her a bit more. You obviously notice that we have the, the opportunity to flirt. She is a romanceable option for the male Imperial agent, if you want to go down that route. You said you wanted to talk. Yes, sir. Ensign Rena Temple, formerly of the Chiss Expansionary Defense Force, reporting for combat drills. I can show you a few things. What brings this on? Frankly, I need the practice. No one ever taught me covert maneuvers. If you've got time... Grab your equipment. I'll find a private spot. Thank you, sir. All right. I think I've sweat enough for one day. Any last words of wisdom for your freshly transferred ensign? Never let anything distract you. No one can compensate for your errors. I'm confident it isn't so dire. But I take your point. You know, my father used to come home from exercises freshly scarred. 
I was 12 before I realized his training drills were intelligence operations. He was captured twice, but he wouldn't let me worry, no matter how bad it got. I didn't know your father was part of intelligence. I thought I'd mentioned it. He was a cipher. Thank you for the lesson. A few more and I'll be infiltrating enemy camps with the best of them. <laughs> I wouldn't get that far ahead, but uh, maybe you'll be infiltrating enemy camps alongside us. But, happy days. Oh, yeah, we don't have our rifle equipped to uh, buff ourselves. Right, okay, we're pretty much all caught up, really. We can get to know Vector a little bit more. Kaleo would like us to deal with her uh, former partners. As I say, I'm a little uh, annoyed that she's went over our head. We may look to deal with her partners, or we may let her stew and worry about them. Of course, leaving them, leaving them around could cause us problems in the future. What we'll do is we'll take a break here. Thank you all for joining me once again with more Star Wars The Old Republic. When we come back, we'll officially be starting the third story arc, part of the Imperial Agent's main storyline. This is not including anything in potential future DLC uh, content. Uh, in regards to DLC, I will probably take Fallon into future content. It may not be immediately after the events of the main storyline. There's a few games I want to touch base on. Uh, similar with Nola, uh, I'm still contemplating taking her as a player of the Republic into the future content. I probably should, but you know. <laughs> Either way, these are things that I'm thinking about in my head, but there's still time. We have still plenty of worlds to visit and story to discover. So thank you for joining me. And as always, feel free to leave a comment if you so wish. And hopefully I'll see you for even more Star Wars The Old Republic next time. Until then, no, take care. Bye-bye now. <laughs>